the basic idea is uh, given a sequence a n. So, given a sequence a n of numbers how to add all its elements. So, that is uh, saying that uh, same as saying what can be say a 1 plus a 2 plus what this quantity can be. So, to define this uh, properly let us make a definition. So, given a sequence a n of real numbers let us uh, define S n to be equal to a 1 plus up to a n and we got the 1. So, that is the sum of uh, the first n terms of the sequence. Okay. So, this S n it is called the nth partial sum. of the sequence a n. So, this is called the nth partial sum and let us uh, uh, give it a name. So, the pair okay, which way on to, okay. So, here is a sequence and here is the partial sums S n. It is called, we will call it a called a series So, a sequence together with its partial sums is called a series of uh, numbers and we say this series, this is a convergent series if I do it small s n, if s n limit n going to infinity s n exists. If you look at the partial sums and take the limit of that, if that limit exists, then we say that the series is convergent okay. uh, and if uh, this limit is equal to s, so s n we write sigma a n n equal to 1 to infinity equal to s. Now, let us uh, observe something uh, so that we do not have to write this cumbersome notation of uh, series being this way that given a sequence a n s n's are defined, partial sums are defined right. So, we know s n's and supposing we say that s we give you a sequence s n of numbers which is the partial sums of some sequence, then the sequence also is known right. So, how is that? So, given a n s n which was defined as a 1 plus a n is known and conversely given s n what is a n that is s n plus 1 minus s n for every n right. 
So, giving the sequence or its partial sums that data both are equivalent to each other right. You give one data you get the other data. So, uh, for that reason we do not uh, write all the time a series to be like this. We just given a sequence a n we uh, so notation for a series is sigma a n right given a sequence a n we write the corresponding series as this. This does not mean you should not take it as if uh, it says that the sum exists it is just a notation okay, for that series. If convergent, so if it is convergent, if the partial sums essence which we defined as sigma i equal to 1 to n a i converges to s, then we write sigma a n equal to 1 to infinity is equal to s. and say a n is convergent. If not, if it is not convergent we say it is is divergent and then we say it is divergent. Right? Let us look at some examples, uh, they are relatively simple examples. So, let us uh, look at some examples. So, let us look at the series sigma a n where the nth term is minus 1 to the power n plus 1 for n bigger than or equal to 1. So, this is a sequence a n what are the terms of sequence 1 plus n equal to 1 or so minus 1 right minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and so on. We know that as a sequence this sequence is not convergent it fluctuates right. Let us try to form the partial sum s n. So, what will be the partial sum? Depends on whether the n is even or odd. So, partial sum will be equal to 0 if n is even right. The terms will cancel out otherwise it will be minus 1 or plus 1. So, uh, partial sums do not converge right. So, we can say that this series minus 1 to the power n plus 1 is not a convergent series by the definition itself. Okay. So, this is not convergent series. The simplest example of a convergent series is the one which we start looking at in our schools normally called the geometric series. So, what is a geometric series? So, it is a series where the nth term a n is r to the power n where r is a fixed real number. So, take a real number, first term is r, second is r square and so on right. And this number r is called the common ratio because it is the ratio of a n plus 1 and a n. So, when is it uh, convergent? We all know that it is convergent when mod of r is strictly less than 1 right. And why, how is that, what is the proof of that? One can find what is S n, one can right? 1 plus r plus this S n is equal to 1 minus r to the power n plus 1 over 1 minus r. That is easy to find if you write S n something multiplied by a, right? it shifts the powers then subtract and you can easily compute what is S n. So, this formula that S n is equal to 1 minus r to the power n plus 1 over 1 minus r. We do it in our schools, but it is not difficult to find. And if uh, r, so the question is whether r to the power n plus 1 converges to something or not as n goes to 
infinity and we know we have done it in sequences that x to the power n converges to 0 if and only if mod x is strictly less than 1. So, using that fact uh, this is convergent if and only if mod x is less than 1 and in that case the sum is equal to r to the power n minus 1 will go to 0. So, it is 1 over 1 minus r. So, the simplest example of a series which is convergent and this will be uh, sort of used again and again a geometric series whose common ratio is less than 1 is convergent. Okay? You will see how this is one of the building blocks for analyzing uh, series. Okay. Let us look at uh, one more example. Let us look at S n equal to 1 over n. Okay. The first one was minus 1 plus 1 and now it is 1 over n. So, what is S n? S n is 1 plus 1 by 2 plus up to 1 by n. Right? And uh, the terms are non-negative. Right? So, it seems S n is going to increase. Right? You are going adding more and more non-negative numbers. Right? So, S 1 is 1 and uh, S 2 is equal to 1 plus half and so on. So, something is increasing, but the question is how much does it increase? Because if the partial sums S n are increasing, we know it is increasing, but if it is bounded then they will converge right by the property of real numbers. So, is it bounded or not bounded? Right? If it is not bounded above then it will not converge. So, to analyze that one has to make some estimates. So, let us look at uh, for n equal to 2 to the power k, let us compute this quantity. Right? So, uh, n to the 2 to the power k, so this is the 1 plus 1 by 2 and so on over 1 over 2 to the power k. And now, you pair up, see 1 over 4 is 1 over 2 square, right? 1 over 3 is 1 over 2 square minus 1. So, make this pairing and 2 to the power k is even, so you can pair up, right? Once you pair up, now this quantity 1 over 2 square minus 1, right? It is bigger than, if I increase the denominator here, it is bigger than 1 over 2 square. right? So, I get bigger than, I do it everywhere and this is 2 by 2 square and uh, uh, k by 2 to the power k. So, this is bigger than 1 plus k by 2. So, this kind of estimates one has to do right, to analyze a series. So, what we are saying is for n equal to 2 to the power k, the sum s 2 to the power k is 1 plus k by 2. Right? So, what happens to this uh, uh, partial sums for n equal to 2 to the power k as k goes to infinity? It is bigger than k by 2. So, it goes to infinity. right? So, at least for the partial sums, we have got a subsequence right? when n is equal to 2 to the power k. The partial sums has a subsequence which goes to infinity is non negative right so it is not bounded above so there is a subsequence which is not bounded above of partial sums so the sequence itself cannot be bounded above right so uh, the sequence of partial sums is not convergent because it is non negative right it is not bounded above but so, given any n right you can always find uh, uh, 2 to the power k say that s to the power uh, such that 2 to the power k is bigger than n. Is it okay? Given any natural number n, you can always find a k such that 2 to the power k is bigger than n, right? That increase is faster than n, right? You can easily prove that. So, s to the power 2 s uh, the partial sum up to 2 to the power k will be bigger than the partial sum up to n. So, that also will go to infinity. right? So, that shows it is not bounded, so it is not convergent. So, what does it imply? It implies that the series 1 over n is not convergent. right? So, this is how by definition itself alone we are trying to analyze. Okay? Because it is non-negative, we can make estimates. 
Let us uh, do one more estimation like this. This is an interesting. Uh, we had 1 over n. Now, let us look at. Uh, so, the series 1 over n is called harmonic series because of a different reason. Okay. Let us consider the harmonic series, but that now the terms are coming plus and minus. So, minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n. So, it starts with n equal to 1, it is 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 and so on alternating. Right? And let us try to find out uh, whether the partial sums for this uh, converge or not right? somewhere. So, let us make some estimates. Once again, um, as before, let us try to look at n equal to two, uh, 2k. So, n equal to 2k, look at the partial sums up to the terms 2k. I think there is something wrong here. This is not this is not 2 to the power 2k, it is just 2k. Okay? So, there is a typo here. Now, how many terms are there? Even number of terms, right? 2k. So, I am taking the sums of first 2k terms. So, I can pair them. Okay? So, the first one, one. So, what I am doing is I am pairing up so that it is sum of non negative terms 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 and so on. So, I have grouped them in 2 2 a pairing right? and 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 that is non negative. right? So, each bracket is a non negative number. Okay? So, as to the so, what does it tell you about to this partial sums? that for n equal to 2 k, the partial sums are increasing, right? because each bracket is non-negative. When in k plus 1, one more bracket will come, some non-negative thing will be added up. So, S 2 k is a sequence of non-negative real numbers. Okay? Let us see what happens when it is odd. Okay? So, let us com compute the same thing. Okay, for 2k plus 1. So, s 2k plus 1, one more term will be added there, right. So, what is the relation between them? s 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1, that is equal to s 2k plus 1, right. One more term is added there, right. Okay. And it is plus here, because 2k plus 1 is odd. So, minus 1 to the power n plus 1 it was. right? So, this is a relation between 2 k and 2 k plus 1. So, if I look at this sequence of 2 k and 2 k plus 1, what is the difference between these two? This one is increasing as 2 k. As 2 k plus 1, when I pair them up, what can I say about the sequence as 2 k plus 1? 1 minus something minus again something I am subtracting and each bracket is non negative. So, I am more and more things are being sub subtracted. So, S 2 k plus 1 is decreasing as k increases, but S 2 k is increasing and this is the relation between them S 2 k is less than 2 k plus 1 and all are bounded in between 0 and 1. So, what does it imply? S 2 k is increasing and bounded. So, that will converge. S 2 k minus 1 that also is decreasing is a monotone sequence bounded below. So, that also will converge. So, both of them converge and what is the difference between the two? Between this S 2 k and S 2 k plus 1 the difference is 1 over k plus 1. So, then the difference can be made as small as you want. So, the sequence of partial sums, the even partial sums and the odd partial sums both converge to the same value. Right? We have got a sequence right? where the odd and the even both converge, the subsequence of odd terms and the subsequence of 
even terms both converge to the same value. So, here is an exercise show that the sequence itself is convergent. So, take it as an exercise in sequences. You have got a sequence so a n of numbers. Say that if I take the sub sequence of even, right. So, a 2, a 4, a 6 that sub sequence and look at the sub sequence a 1, a 3 and so on both converge to the same value. Then claim that the sequence itself should converge to that value. Okay, the sequence itself is convergent. It is a very small exercise. It is a good exercise to go back and revise your notion of sequences. Just definition. So, that will mean what? What will that mean? Odd and even both converge. So, the sequences themselves converge, right. So, that means S n is convergent. S n itself is convergent that was the exercise we are saying and as a result this series is convergent. So, the interesting thing is the series 1 over n is not convergent, right, but minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n that is a convergent series, right, alternate plus and minus in terms if you make it that is called the alternating harmonic series. So, that is called, so this series, this series is called al alternating harmonic series that is convergent. So, I am just giving you some examples to illustrate that how definition can be used to prove something is convergent or not and it becomes slightly cumbersome every time estimating the partial sums and trying to see whether it is convergent or not. So, so these are the examples which illustrate that. So, naturally uh, let us look at one more probably 1 over n square. Okay. So, the series is nth term is 1 over n square. There is a series of non-negative terms. So, 1 over n square is non-negative. So, partial sums will be a monotonically increasing sequence of numbers. The question is whether it is bounded above or not. If it is bounded above the partial sums, then the series will converge. If not, then it will diverge. Again, let us try to estimate. Okay. The claim is that if I look at uh, n k, which is 2 to the power k minus 1, okay, then S n k is less than or equal to sum of that geometric series 1 by 2 plus 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 2 cube and so on. So, we are trying to bring in somewhere again something known kind of a thing. right? And this proof for every k we want to prove something. So, what is the technique of proving something for every natural number? The, the only thing we know is by induction. right? So, induction, so I apply induction S n 1 is equal to 1. So, it is true n k plus 1, right. So, what will be the that is S n k plus something, right, plus the remaining terms which are being added, okay. And that squares 2 k square. So, you can make it less than 1 over 2 to the power k is less than 1 over 2 and so on, okay. So, this becomes less than the geometric series. So, estimates basically. Okay. So, once you do that, once you know this is true, so what happens to the series S n k? It is less than this, right? And this is a convergent series, we know that. Okay. So, what happens to the limit as n and as k goes to infinity? Right? The geometric series. Is it okay? it was bounded by the geometric series. So, that we know the sum of nth terms okay, and goes to infinity. So, sorry. So, what we are saying is there is a subsequence n k. Okay, there is a subsequence n k of partial sums as sense which are bounded between 0 and 2. K 
can i say that that implies sn itself is bounded what is nk what was nk nk was to the power k minus 1 right we are saying that if i take n to be nk to be this then snk is bounded can i claim that sn itself is bounded keep in mind they are non negative right once again given any n given any n you can find a k say that n is less than nk is that okay given any natural number n you can find a power of 2 to the power k say that n is less than 2 to the power k minus 1 is that okay Yes or no? Yes. Natural numbers, two to the power, right? They are going to increase faster than n anyway, much faster. Okay. So that means what? And they are non-negative terms. So given any n, there is a k such so that n is less than n k. Can I say s n is less than s s of n k? Yeah, because they are non-negative terms. S n is increasing, right? and that is bounded by 2 so each sn is bounded by 2 each partial sum is bounded by 2 because the uh, sequence of partial sums is monotonically increasing and for n equal to 2 to the power k minus 1 it is bounded by 2 and couple this with the fact that given any n you can find a natural number k says that n is less than 2 to the n 2 to the power k minus 1 so sn will be less than the partial sum up to 2 to the power k minus 1 which is less than 2 so each sn is bounded by 2 it is monotonically increasing so they will be convergent right because they are non negative so 1 over n square is a convergent series okay so this is convergent monotonically increasing and bounded so it is convergent okay here what was helping us is because this is a series of non negative terms right partial sums are monotonically increasing we have to only analyze whether they are bounded above or not okay right so here is a uh, keep in mind one thing the sum of convergent series is always unique if a series is convergent its sum is unique why the limit of a sequence is unique what is the definition of sum it is a limit of partial sums and partial sums can converge only to one limit right so limit of a se convergent sequence is unique that implies that the sum of a convergent series is unique suppose you drop some of the terms from a a1 a2 an is a sequence given i want to know that whether it is summable from 1000 terms onwards or not that is equivalent to saying whether it is the series itself is convergent or not because what is left is the only sum of finite terms only right so if so the, so you can say that the convergence of a series does not depend upon first few terms of the series it is same as the fact that we did for sequences convergence of a sequence depends only on what is the tail of the sequence so convergence or divergence of a series does not depend on the first few terms whether that those are added in the series or not but the sum may change right if you sum it from 1 to onwards or 1000 onwards right the sum may change but convergence or divergence will not depend upon uh, it depends only on the tail of the sequence an which is given uh, cauchy's criteria which is uh, a consequence of uh, that every a sequence is convergent if and only if it is cauchy a series is convergent when this partial sums converge 
and partial sums will converge only when the partial sums is a Cauchy sequence, right? So, coupled with that fact, Cauchy criteria that uh, sequence A n is convergent if and only if partial sums is a Cauchy and that is same as saying given epsilon, you can write epsilon delta, epsilon n naught definition, given epsilon, right? the difference between the nth and the mth term should be small and that is that sum from mod of x n plus 1 to x m should be small for m bigger than n right s n minus s m that should be small. So, there is nothing uh, is a simple consequence of uh, the fact that every sequence is a sequence is convergent if and only if it is Cauchy. Okay. So, apply it to the partial sums. Now, here is another simple uh, fact that suppose a series is convergent, right? Then what is the nth term? If a series is convergent, what is the nth term? This is a series whether convergent or not let us not bother right s n is the partial sum then what is s n plus 1 minus s n that is just a n plus 1 right simple arithmetic ok now if sigma a n is convergent then in this left hand side if I take the limit n going to infinity then star implies what? What is the left hand side limit of the left hand side? Series is given to be convergent then what is the left hand side? That is 0 is equal to limit n going to infinity of a n plus 1 right and if you like this is same as limit n going to infinity of a n does not matter right or I could have just written here s n minus s n minus 1 right I could have written that is equal to a n ok either way. So, I get a consequence very simple observation that if a series is convergent then the nth term in that sequence right the sequence of nth term must go to 0 ok. So, a n must go to 0. So, this gives me a necessary condition for a series to be convergent. A series is convergent then it should necessarily happen that the nth term should become smaller and smaller and go to 0. Okay. So, that is a necessary condition and very useful one because if the nth term does not go to 0 then the series cannot converge. So, not convergence is useful proving. So, that is same as saying if a n is not equal to 0 it is divergent, but if it is it is only a necessary condition it is not sufficient. That means, if the nth term goes to 0 that does not imply that the series will always converge. For example, just now we said 1 over n the series 1 over n is not convergent right nth term is 1 over n that goes to 0, but the alternating series again the nth term goes to 0, but that is convergent right. So, this is not a sufficient condition that the nth term should go to 0, it is only necessary. Okay. So, may either converge or diverge. So, you can give examples we just now given. Okay. You can apply if, if you like you can apply it to geometric series right. We proved for mod r less than 1 for r bigger than 1 nth term will not go to 0 if r is bigger than 1 right it goes to infinity. So, that does not converge ok. Let us look at 
this kind of a series. Okay, it looks like n square plus 3n plus 1 divided by 2n square plus 1. It looks like the numerator and denominator both are increasing, right? At the same rate, essentially n square, right? Power is n square. So when n goes to infinity, it will stabilize somewhere because both are increasing at the same rate. So how do we analyze that? So look at the nth term. Nth term is n square plus n plus three divided by two n square plus one. I want to analyze what happens as n goes to infinity. So the simplest thing is divide numerator and denominator by n square because I know one over power of n goes to zero. So that gives you one plus numerator will give you one plus one over n plus uh, one over n plus three over n square, right? And the denominator will give you 2 plus 1 over n square as n goes to infinity, the limit will be equal to numerator will go to 1, denominator goes to 2. So, by the theorems on sequences, if a n is convergent, b n is convergent, and b n is not conver convergent to 0, then a n, ben, a n divided by b n is convergent to limit of a n divided by limit of b n. So, that theorem says that the limit of this nth term of this series is converging to 1 by 2, which is not equal to 0. So, this series cannot converge, right, because the nth term does not go to 0. So, nth term that is how it is used to say analyze not convergent of a uh, series. So, this does not converge, right. Now, here are the, the theorems about uh, algebra of limits giving you uh, algebra of convergent uh, uh, series. If a n is a series which is convergent, b n is a series which is convergent, you can add nth term of both get a new series whose nth term is a n plus b n. Right? Then what will be the partial sums of a n plus b n? Partial sum of a n plus partial sums of b n and if a n is convergent then partial sums converges. So, partial sum of the sum will converge to sum of the partial sums by limit theorems on sequences. So, if a n is convergent, b n is convergent then a n plus b n is convergent and sum is equal to sum of a n plus sum of b n because of the limit theorems on sequences. Same uh, uh, logic applies to the other you can have difference, you can have the scalar multiplication, right. One can wonder what happens if you multiply two series. Can you multiply two series? Doesn't matter. You can just look at a and b and if you want, that is one way of multiplication, right. But in the partial sums will not be par multiplication of partial sums, right. So, that will not work out, okay. So, it is only for the additions. Okay, one can think of what could be a way of multiplying um, series so that the corresponding result for series is valid. You understand what I am? I am throwing a question. What could be given a series a n, given a series b n? What could be the multiplication of these two series so that the limit of that product, whatever we define, is product of the sums. Think of it, it is a good thing to think, it is possible to do such things, but let us not do into that. So, this is algebra of uh, uh, sums for the convergent series, this is for convergent only. If a n is convergent, if b n is convergent, then a n plus b n that series is also convergent okay? using the sequencing uh, theorems on sequences. Okay. How is that useful? You can always come make examples. Look at this series 2 by t to the power n plus 3 by 4 to the power whole to the power n. Is it convergent?
So, it is sum of 2. Okay. So, 1 over uh, 2 over uh, 3 raised to 1 over 2 by 3 to the power n and you try to show that both of them are convergent and then the sum will be the, the sum of that. Okay. So, I am leaving for you to check why both are convergent. Okay. Right. Uh, more examples one can give, I think uh, uh, this is not this is not convergent why? Because if it were right, I know phi by this is convergent when I subtract it should give me 2, two by n should be convergent which is not true right. So, so you can, one can play with this kind of things the usefulness of uh, saying that sum of convergent series is convergent. Okay. Here is something yeah this is okay. So, let us what I am going to do is I am going to specialize for some time on series with non negative terms only right a n's are all non negative. Okay. When a n's are non negative partial sums are going to be increasing partial sums are going to be increasing right because we will be adding something all the time non negative. Okay. So, either the series will converge if the partial sums are bounded above or what will happen the partial sums will keep on increasing and go to plus infinity. So, in some in such case when sequences of non negative terms are given series of non negative terms, if convergent we write what is the sum or sigma a n less than infinity. Other only other possibility is it is divergent and in that case sums partial sums converge to plus infinity. So, one writes sigma a n 1 to infinity equal to plus infinity that is a notation. Okay, nothing more than that. Okay. Right. So, uh, just a notation saying that they are. Okay. So, here is one, the one of the simplest tests which can help us to analyze convergence or divergence of a series. You are given two uh, sequences of non negative terms a n and b n. Say that a n is less than b n ultimately what does ultimately mean from same stage onwards right ultimately means for some stage onwards because it is a tail which is going to matter for convergence right. So, you can write ultimately that is uh, for some n bigger than capital N a n is less than or equal uh, a n is less than or equal to b n right. So, that means what? each term of the sequence b n is dominating the term a n from some stage onwards. So, what will happen to the partial sums? Partial sum of a n will be dominated by the partial sums of the series b n right because a n is less than b n. So, if the partial sums of b n s converge partial sums of a n s are dominated by partial sums of b n. So, that will converge because it is less than or equal to right and if a n s do not converge then b n s cannot converge because a n s are less than b n right. So, you get two ways of uh, writing it just writing the partial sums of the corresponding things that if b n s are convergent if the series b n is convergent then the series a n is also convergent right is it okay because the partial sums of a n s will be less than or equal to partial sums of b n and that converges so no problem okay and because a n is less than b n if a n is divergent that means what the partial sums go to infinity for partial sums of b n s are bigger than partial sum of a n. So, b n s also will partial sums of b n also will go to infinity right. So, 
it implies that if a n is divergent then b n is divergent if b n is convergent then a n is also convergent simple comparison of two series from some stage onwards a n is less than b n okay very simple proof so no problem about that so let us skip the proof try to write a proof yourself what will be involved okay let me just write probably once so that you understand why some minor modifications are required so we have got an less than equal to bn for every n for every n or from some stage onwards that doesn't matter from some stage onward so what is sn equal to a1 plus a2 plus an will be less than or equal to b1 plus b2 plus b n and that is uh, that is s n of this what shall i write for s n of that some notation so I'll let me write s n dash we are calling that as s n dash we are calling it as s n so this implies this so s n dash convergent implies sn convergent right is it okay why how should i justify how should i justify this statement yeah these are partial sums only sn is partial sum this is a partial sum now we can write this this is okay but i'm saying this imply so this statement implies convergent is or hence sn dash convergent implies sn convergent why is that bns are not convergent Yeah, series B n is convergent is same as saying this is convergent. So this is because series B n is convergent. Why does it imply sigma uh, S n is convergent? Yes, you have to say something more, right? Bounded by what? partial sum this partial sum is less than or equal to partial sum that so the claim is sn is convergent why what is the reason sn is a sequence of numbers why is it convergent it is bounded by sn prime see both are non negative terms right so sn dash is increasing right so limit of sn dash will dominate all sns limit of sn dash will dominate all sns is it okay and sn itself is also increasing is non negative terms so partial sums are again increasing so this is also a increasing sequence of non negative terms which is bounded above and hence it may it must converge so to, we are using both things if a sequence of if a mono, if a sequence is monotonically increasing and convergent so what is that what is the limit limit is upper bound right least upper bound so all sns dash for every n is less than or equal to the upper bound which is the limit which exists so sns are bounded monotonically increasing so they converge right so that is the argument that we have to supply in between and similarly if we want to say that ans are the sigma an is divergent right that means what that the partial sums sn are converging to infinity right and sn is less than sn dash so sn dash also will converge to infinity because they are bigger than sn and sn is going to infinity so if an is divergent then bn also is divergent simple observations about sequences only 
Okay. So, that is the comparison test. Okay. So, let us uh, skip the proof of that. So, let us look at example of comparison test. So, we are comparing to. So, look at the series. Remember, we did 1 over n that was divergent, 1 over n square was convergent. So, now we are looking at for any p between bigger than 0 less than infinity, what can we say about that. Okay. So, let us assume, so it depends on p of course, because n p equal to 1 we know it is a divergent. right? So, let us look at when p is between 0 and 1, then n to the power p right is less than or equal to n because p is uh, between 0 and 1. So, what happens to 1 over n p that is bigger than 1 over that will be bigger than 1 over n right and 1 over n is divergent. So, 1 over n p will be divergent the sigma 1 over n p is divergent for p between 0 and 1 by comparison test comparing it with 1 over the series 1 over n right simple observation. So, that is uh, divergent. So, this is divergent between 0 and 1. Let us look at when p is bigger than 2, we know 1 over n square was convergent, right? The p was equal to 2. So, let us take p bigger than or equal to 2. What happens to n p and n square? If p is bigger than 2, compare n to the power p and n to the power 2 n square n to the power p will be bigger than n square right so convergence of 1 over n square will give you convergence of 1 over n to the power p for p bigger than or equal to 2 already proved convergence of 1 over n square already proved divergence of 1 over n comparison gives you for p between 1 and 0 n p is divergent for p bigger than or equal to 2 1 over n p sigma n p is convergent between 1 and 2 we have not done anything yet right because we are just known thing we have to compare with something known a n b n a n less than or equal to b n if you know something about b n convergent then you can say a n convergent sigma a n convergent right we will do that also a bit later for example, let us look at this kind of a thing. So, how these things help us analyzing 1 over 2 n square plus n plus 1 kind of thing. It looks like 1 over n square. It looks like 1 over n square. So, can we can we compare 1 over 2 n square plus n plus 1 with 1 over n square nth term? Right, already 2 n squares so you are increasing denominator, so making it smaller anyway. So, 1 over 2 n square plus n plus 1 that you call as a n is less than or right 1 over n square which is b n that is convergent. So, this is convergent. Right. So, how you think and what you have to compare with that you have to sort of keep in mind. So, this is convergent. I think there are more examples uh, you can study later on. Let us look at uh, something which requires a bit of thought, but not much. Spore is again kind of uh, comparison, but we are going to look at. See, uh, we looked at uh, that one over two n square and all that, and one over n square. So we two n square and n square sort of compatible with each other kind of a thing. No, we could compare. So, here we are looking at a n and b n two sequences of positive real numbers only for the time being positive and look at the limit of that suppose that limit exists. Suppose the limit exists and is L. Okay. So, what does the meaning of saying this L exists a n over b n There's, that means eventually a n and b n are stabilizing. right? they are becoming sort of coming to a common kind of uh, proportion kind of a thing. right? So, the claim is if this limit exists and if this limit is not equal to 0, 
then you can have a inequality which says for some alpha and beta alpha b n will be less than or equal to a n is less than or equal to beta times b n if this limit is not equal to 0. In what way that is useful? It helps you to compare a n and b n right. It says from some stage onwards you can compare a n and b n right. So, convergence of one can imply the convergence of other or divergence of one can imply the divergence of the other right. So, this limit becomes important and if this ok. So, let us look at to first why is this thing happening. So, we, I want to look at uh, a simple you see analysis of real line is coming back to a picture. So, a n divided by b n limit n going to infinity equal to L and that is not equal to 0. So, here is 0, here is L right either on positive side or on the negative side either side does not matter is away from 0 ok. So, what is the meaning of saying that the limit exists? limit exists means the terms should come in a neighborhood of that point after some stage onwards. So, let us define a neighborhood like this say L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. So, let us choose epsilon say that. So, if L is bigger than 0 choose say that L minus epsilon is also bigger than 0 then convergence there exists some n naught such that a n by b n belongs to L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon for every n bigger than n naught is that ok. That is simple convergence it comes in a neighborhood I want to stay away from 0. So, I have just taken L minus. So, what does that mean? That means, L minus epsilon is less than a n by b n is less than L plus epsilon right and call this number as alpha, call this number as beta ok. So, then alpha times b n is less than a n is less than beta times b n you get the inequality simple definition of limit if the limit is not 0 a n and over b n should stay away from 0 right that is all. And if this limit is equal to 0 will mean what? So, this was l bigger than 0 similarly l less than 0 does not matter right bigger this is l bigger than 0 if it is less than 0 what will be your argument? So, if l is here ok, if l is here then you will have l plus epsilon n right. Then you will choose epsilon such that l plus epsilon is a bigger than 0. Here it we have taken this, in this case we will choose epsilon such that l plus epsilon is bigger than 0. So, everything will be inside this, again this will be your alpha that will be your beta ok. Pardon? They were positive. I'm saying this. Okay, so is a valid point. I'm just giving you general arguments for any sequence a n and b n, not necessarily positive. In our case, other case, this doesn't matter, right? But in general, I'm saying the limit of a sequence, right? If it is not zero, then everything should be in a neighborhood of away from zero. Right. Now, if the limit is equal to 0 that is possible right. So, let us say that limit of a n by b n is equal to 0 that means what by the same argument ok. Then there exists 
So, for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a n naught such that a n by b n between minus epsilon n plus epsilon right in a neighborhood of 0. So, that means what minus epsilon b n is less than a n is less than a n plus epsilon. Uh, uh, Bn times, sorry, Bn times epsilon. But ans, in our case, all the ans are non-negative, so zero less than <coughs> an, less than epsilon Bn, because all the ans are non-negative. So if the limit is zero, now you get only one inequality, an and less than or equal to b n, right. But still it gives you a comparison between a n and b n. You can compare a n with b n, right. So, that was the lemma, okay. Now, you can use this lemma in view of the comparison test, okay. So, what will that give me? If the limit is not equal to 0, of this thing and supposing B n is convergent, then look at this, this part of the inequality A n less than or equal to beta times B n, right. B n is convergent, so that will imply A n is convergent and other way around if A n is convergent, I can use this part to say B n is convergent. So, if the limit is not equal to 0 of A n by B n, then either both a n and b n converge or both diverge, right. If sigma a n is converge, convergent, then sigma b n is convergent and other way around. If the limit is equal to 0, then only convergence of b n can apply convergence of a n or divergence of a n can apply divergence of b n, right. It will not give you if and only if. The idea is that comparison test, right, when you want to find the sum of a series, it is only some point onwards the things matter, right. Well, how are we getting this? We are saying that L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon, a n by b n is in between for n bigger than or equal to n naught, right. So, this comparison is valid only for and that is good enough for convergence, okay. So, that gives me that uh, test which is the limit comparison test. So, either sigma a n by is convergent if and only if sigma b n is convergent, right. If limit is 0, then b n is convergent implies a n is convergent, right. So, how uh, this test helps in analyzing uh, series of non-negative terms that is important. So, let us look at just some uh, examples of that. I think that we have uh, now p bigger than or equal to 1, you can analyze that, okay. So, that we have already done actually comparison test, okay. Like this one, I said uh, n, n square. So, eventually, if I numerator I call as a n, denominator I call as b n, right. Then eventually it looks like n over n square 1 over n, the limit looks like to be equal to 0, right. So, I can try to apply limit comparison test here. So, find out the limit, okay, of uh, no, I think there is something wrong here, right. Oh, I should not compare n with n square. Let us, <laughs> yeah. you see, if you directly you try to compare numerator and denominator, then you will end up into problem, because you do not know either of them are convergent or not. You understand what I am saying? You should not take a n to be equal to n plus 5. I do not know that series is divergent, so I cannot help it. So, this is my series. It looks like 1 over n, right. 
n over n square it looks like 1 over n so let us try to compare this with 1 over n ratio an by bn so an is equal to this bn is 1 over n what is an by bn so an by bn that will be n square plus 5n right 1 over n bn was 1 over n an so and that limit is 1 over n square n square that will be limit will be equal to 1 so limit of an by bn is equal to 1 which is not 0 1 over n is divergent so this also will be divergent so that is what i said if i look at the in a general term it looks like 1 over n it looks like 1 over n and 1 over n is not convergent so this series should not be convergent and that we are formalizing by comparing with an by bn limit of that eventually it looks like 1 over n okay that's how your thinking should go so that is divergent n square n to the power 4 what does it look like it looks like 1 over n square so i should compare it with 1 over n square same technique right an equal to this bn equal to 1 over n square when you divide an by bn the limit will be equal to right 3 n to the power 4 and so on so what will be the limit that will be what is the limit of that it will be 3 by 1 so that will be equal to 3 right is it okay it will be equal to 3 by uh, 1 here so that will be equal to 3 so limit is not equal to 0 right so convergence of 1 over n square will imply convergence of this series which is 3 n square minus 2 n plus 4 divided by that right eventually it looks like 1 over n square yes yeah but how do you formalize that that is the in, that is how you should think that the sequence general term looks like 1 over n square so eventually it should look like 1 over n square and that is what is the limit comparison test says that justification for that is limit comparison test so look at an divided by bn an is this bn is equal to 1 over n square compute the ratio and take the limit that tells you eventually how does this an compare with bn right so that is a rigorous way of saying the same thing so that is con convergent okay so here is uh, a caution saying that in all these things you have to think of who with the what you should compare right you have to make a sort of a guess that I should compare it with this by looking at power up and down and so on and then only compare right. So these tests are not intrinsic tests once again I am bringing that word intrinsic remember we use the word intrinsic when we looked at convergence of sequences finding a sequence of a limit exists a sequence is convergent you require the limit which is not given to you but saying is Cauchy I do not require anything outside I only have to analyze whether the terms are coming closer to each other or not so Cauchyness is an intrinsic property and the beauty is it is equivalent to saying the limit exists now here root test uh, sorry uh, comparison test and all these things ask me to guess something outside the given knowledge that I have to find someone like 1 over n square 1 over n and then compare them right but can I have a test which does not require me to do that kind of a thing by looking at the series itself I can say something so there are tests possible like that so let us look at uh, that is called the ratio test so we are given the sequence a n look at the series a n so look at the limit of a n plus 1 divided by a n the next term its ratio with the previous one look at that ratio 
y limit eventually. So, take a limit of this that is L. If L is less than 1, then the series is convergent, bigger than 1 it is divergent and equal to 1 is the same kind of problem that it can converge, it can diverge. So, what could be a proof of this? Till now, what are the techniques we know? We only know geometric series is convergent, right? The compare and then we knew that 1 over n square is convergent, and then uh, the comparison test gave me something for bigger than 2 and uh, less than uh, 1 and 1 over n p, right? So, those are known facts already, okay? And here, L is equal to this limit. So, let us analyze what is the meaning of limit means here. If L is the limit of this ratio, that means what? And L is less than 1. L is less than 1. So, what does it mean? here is 0, here is 1 and here is somewhere L. I should, uh, one should point out uh, it is strictly less than 1, okay? so it is not equal to 1, it is something in between. That means what? That means, after some stage all the terms of the sequence must be close to L. So, let us say they are here. Okay. So, uh, so, let us uh, L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. So, for every epsilon bigger than 0 such that L minus epsilon less than L less than L plus epsilon strict, still less than 1. Let us keep it less than 1. Okay. Is it possible? Okay, because L is between zero and one. So, so for there exists some n naught such that a n plus one by a n is less than L plus epsilon and bigger than L minus epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. Right? Is it okay? Definition of a limit. Now, see what is happening is it says look at this part, it says a n plus 1 by a n is less than l plus epsilon. That means, a n plus 1 is less than l plus epsilon times. for every n bigger than n naught, right. So, this is telling me how much a n plus 1 is in comparison with a n, right. And this thing is less than 1, right this is less than 1. So, now let us try to use it inductively, this is for any n, right, n naught onwards. So, what will happen? A n, so let us take equal to A n, n equal to n naught. So, I got A n naught plus 1 is less than L plus epsilon of a n naught, right? Is it bigger than n naught? Let us go to the next step. A n naught plus 2 will be less than L plus epsilon a n naught plus 1, right? But a n that is already less than, so it is L plus epsilon to the power 2 a n naught, right? So, what is happening? So, what will happen to the k n plus k. 
So, if we look at a n naught plus k, that will be less than l plus epsilon to the power k of a n naught inductively. Right. So, what we are saying is the the terms of the given sequence a n naught from some stage onwards are bounded by this times a constant that is fixed thing a n naught. And what kind of so, if I call this as b, b to the power k, what is b? It is less than 1. So, that is geometric series. So, that is convergent. So, I was saying a k a n's are less than b n's and b n's are geometric series from some stage onwards. So, that is convergent. So, that implies a n will be convergent. Right? So, that is how this is useful. It says if L is less than 1, the series is convergent. If L is bigger than 1, what will happen? A n by B n will stay away from 1 on the right hand side. So, A n by B n will be bigger than L minus epsilon which is bigger than 1. So, when inductively again powers. So, it will be a geometric series with common ratio bigger than 1. Again, comparison test will give me that this should be divergent, right? So that will say the series is divergent. When it is equal to one, either thing is possible. One can give examples, right? So definition of the limit of the ratio a n plus one and a n is falling back upon comparison test and geometric series, right? The proof involves writing the limit and using the fact that the geometric series is convergent if the common ratio is less than 1. Okay. So, that gives us the result. So, we have already seen that. So, you can write it out the proof a n plus 1 is less than that, that is less than 1 and so on. L bigger than 1, right. So, it will keep on increasing comparison. So, that is, is bigger than 1, you can Okay. Okay. So let us look at uh, yeah, let us look at some applications of it, simple applications. A n is one over two n minus one. It looks like one over n anyway, right? So, I do not have to really do anything, just compare it with that. But let us take the ratio, right? The ratio is equal to with 1 over n or ratio of this itself, that limit is equal to 1. So, divergent, okay? So, as we guessed, you can compare it with that if you like, either way. So, limit is equal to 1. Okay. So, divergent a n plus 1 divided by a n, if the limit is equal to 1, then the series is divergent, right. That is what we less than 1, it was convergent. Okay. Pardon? L strictly less than 1 convergent, because in the geometric series, common ratio strictly less than 1 only will give you convergence, and common ratio is equal to 1 that gives you divergence. One. So, this is not less strictly less than 1. Which one? Yes. So, here it is divergent that is all. Limit is 1, but it is divergent compared to that. Which theorem? No, no, we are giving examples that when it is equal to 1, I th anything can happen. For the third case, right, I said L equal to 1, anything can happen. Strictly less than 1, it is convergent. Strictly bigger than 1, it is divergent. So, in this case, it is strictly, uh, it is equal to 1, right, but if you apply the comparison test, right, it is divergent. 
So, equal to 1 by divergent. You can look at uh, n square. Similarly, the ratio will be equal to 1, but it is convergent. Right? If you look at n square, the ratio will be equal to 1, it is convergent. So, either is possible in that case. We are not applying the theorem, but we are saying that counter examples for the third case. Okay? Right. Okay, so there is something called the root test. It's something similar to the, uh, the ratio test. It says ANs are non-negative. Look at the nth root. Look at the limit. If that exists, less than one is convergent, bigger than one, or infinity, it is divergent, equal to one. Anything can happen. Basically, eventually analyzing the limit and bringing it back to something that is already known, right? That is the idea of the proof. Okay. So, if limit of a n raised to be one over n, that is l is less than one, then what happens? It should stay in a neighborhood of one, right? It should stay in a neighborhood of limit is one. If the limit l is less than one, it should stay on the left side of 1. right? That means, what a n raised to power 1 over n will be less than something which is less than 1. So, when you raise the power, so a n will be less than that small quantity which is less than 1 raised to power n. Again geometric series will convergence. Right? So, basically uh, definition and geometric, these are giving these tests. Okay? Similarly, for l bigger than 1, Again, geometric series, the common ratio bigger than 1 will be divergent. Equal to 1, we have to give examples to illustrate that. Right? So, a n will be less than alpha to the power n, while alpha is less than 1, I said. So, that will be geometric series and convergent. And similarly, uh, by the comparison test and ge comparison with geometric series. Okay? When bigger than 1, a n will be bigger than on the right hand side of 1. So, L minus epsilon will be bigger than 1. So, power A n will be bigger than L minus epsilon raised to power n that is bigger than 1. So, again comparison will give you it is divergent. Okay? So, basically uh, you can give examples. Okay? So, I think uh, these examples you should study and uh, try to do it them because I can explain examples and it will be ok. You will nod your head, yes it is ok and all that, but you should understand uh, why. Okay. Okay. So, look at the examples when the limit is uh, less than 1, bigger than 1 and so on. Um, I do not know whether. Uh, okay. Yeah, the limit of this quantity is equal to e. Did we prove that in the tutorial classes or something? Limit of 1 over 1 plus n okay, or n plus 1, 1 plus 1 over n raised to power n, that limit is equal to the number e, Euler's number. So, that is being used here actually. That is an interesting thing. I do not know. Was it part of a tutorial 1 plus 1 over n raised to power n that limit exists? is equal to e. Anyway, uh, so that is being used here because that is actually the definition of the number e. e is a number uh, which is called Euler's number and the same which comes in the exponential function also e, e raised to power 1. Exponential of 1 is the same number as this. So, there are connections I think let me not go into that. Those who are interested, read, see the slides and try to figure out why it is same number as that, if you are interested in mathematics. Right? As such, uh, unity, uh, air coming here, coming there, both are same or not. Okay? So, I think uh, that is a root test. There is an integral test, I will not discuss much about this, because this is something, uh, is not difficult, but anyway, it is a uh, uh, it 1 to infinity that is an improper Riemann integral kind of a thing. So, let f be a continuous function from 1 to infinity. 
evaluate the value of f at the point n and if that is a n then the series and this integral either both converge or both diverge you remember we had that defined what is called the convergence of a improper integral right so this relates with improper integral um, yeah i think let me not go into the proof of this is easy but let me not go into the proof and let me not just statement uh, of this this you can uh, look at uh, to apply with something like function being 1 over x to the power p and uh, p between 1 and 0 and then you show it is a improper integral is convergent and then you see how remember i said between 0 and 1 1 over n to the power p we did not analyze right we analyze only when equal to 1 1 over n or bigger than that so this is the integral test gives you but that requires the fact that this is a convergent improper integral right so one requires that so let me uh, probably uh, sum it up what we have done today how do you analyze uh, testing or convergence of a series the general rule is check first of all whether the nth term goes to zero or not if it does not go to zero it is not convergent so proceed only when it goes to zero analyze convergence you can apply integral test if it looks like a rational function something divided by something that n square divided by something then uh, the limit comparison test may work okay and uh, for the standard series you can try to compare it with geometric series p series and so on ratio tests works when there are factorials and powers coming well, because when you divide powers will try to cancel it out right so you should try that root test is useful uh, when nth root of uh, somewhere it is coming okay so the general rules kind of not rules general hints of how to analyze convergence of series so we have looked at only today for non negative terms series right but we saw one uh, series alternate series was convergent right so and if series is not convergent you can always take the absolute values each term and see whether that is convergent or not so there is something called absolute convergence of a series and uh, series for alternating terms so we'll look at it in next time okay right